Hey there, everyone. Um, hey guys, um, it's me, and <laughs> as I said in a previous post before. If you thought that seeing my the last um, episode of my cynical optimism of my liberated NYC sex life, that that was like <laughs> the the ending of this, then you were sadly mistaken. Because we're right back, maybe even worse than where we were before. Um, and that is exactly where we are. Um, wow, and as I'm doing this, I'm actually hearing my phone going off. Um, so, um, right now, I, um, I am feeling very, um, disappointed and I'm feeling very like um like the best thing I can probably say is um I'm feeling very like hopeless is the best situation I can say because although I'm very appreciative very appreciative of oh great and I am you guys see this probably can't see it. Blair. Only in, only in my fucking, only in LA, I think you can get something like that. Temporarily banned again from Kick. Like, you get banned from Kick. You have been banned for 10 minutes for setting the profile picture that violates, that violates Kick's community standards. Oh, look at the picture that I got violated for. I just want you guys to see the picture that I guess people find so offensive here. A picture of me in tights. This is the picture that I continuously keep getting the temporary ban on. If I get something like just keep getting the temporary ban so I guess I get like booted from kicks, which is probably like... <laughs> Now, that would probably just be the end of, like, I've never heard of anyone getting banned from Kick. That's just like the Kardashians getting banned from going to any NBA functions, um, which can't happen. So, let me tell you guys, um, there's so much to tell you guys and fill you in on. Um... I can't even fake, like, being happy because there's nothing to be happy about. Um, anyways, I actually was going to be spending a very intimate, um, time with this boxer. And, you know, anyone that knows me knows that I, I have a big thing for athletes because the fact that, you know... With me being a very active person that I am and having a very active sex life, I have come to figure out that athletes are usually the best match for me. Now, this gentleman here, um, I met on the social media network, PLF or whatever, and due to the fact that I am in the unfortunate circumstance of having to be transgender and tell people that I'm transgender um, but can't say it on POF because of the fact that you will get banned <laughs> you have to you have to basically say it in code words like say like keywords like hey I'm the best of both worlds thank Caitlyn Jenner Sydney Starr and the fact that most 
people don't read or don't, you know, Google, they don't even know who that is, and then you have to give even more words, and like, even more keywords. Okay, think of man and woman. And then they still don't get it. Okay, bitch, I'm a man. Oh, you're a man. You have to, like, just be really, like, to some of these guys. So anyways, let me tell you what just happened here. And I'm still kind of like, I'm, I'm not like surprised, I'm very disappointed because of the fact that um, he was very handsome, very handsome, almost to the, he, he was handsome to the point where I, I had to question whether or not he was actually heterosexual because of the fact that, you know, nowadays the gay guys look like the straight guys and the straight guys look like the gay guys, vice versa. So sometimes when a guy looks too good to be true, you have to like, hmm. And I've, I've been, I've noticed many times when, like a, if a guy looks too good, just like the girls, if he looks too good, everything's like too good, like this guy, he's a boxer and everything like that. I mean, tats and everything. I'm like, wait a minute, hmm. Are you a butch queen? So anyways, um, he was not a butch queen. Um, however, it, that served its own purposes. Because um, by me telling him that I was trans, and he kept telling me the fact that, oh my God, I would have never known that you were trans if you would have not told me. And, you know, and we had a really nice deep conversation and everything. All those videos of hoes on Pornhub making videos Trey took look like they be wearing the pussy out. Trey does do it, girl, but let me tell you something. I think I've said this in many times before. Men, I noticed, play politics. And he was showing me this video of him fucking this fish. Raw, of course. Um... And then, mind you, this is toward the end, and I said, why are you showing me this video when you've kind of already made and come to your conclusion that, because you know, he basically alluded and said to myself, he, he said in so many ways, like, you know, you know, I, shit, I, I like females, you know, but, you know, good looking out, my homie, you know, you, know, you look bad, you know, you, I would have never known if you would have told me. And it just kind of like makes me ask the question, why did I tell you? And then, now I understand. I've always understood this, but now it is a fucking curse because of the fact that you tell the guys you are trans up front, and yes, you get everything's on the up and up and oh he knows the truth you know you're being honest but then here comes the politics he sits on one side I sit on one another side instead of giving me a hug he gives me a homeboy dad um and because in his mind no matter how feminine I look and everything, he still see he's still thinking in his mind that this is the homie because of the genitals and whatever. Because of me being honest. And I've noticed in the past when I have been conniving and sneaking in, and when I haven't told guys, yes, it's a completely different aesthetic. The guys are more, honey is night and day, night and day. Now, granted, you have, there are certain precautions that you have to take, because not every girl can pull this, and I do not advocate this, but, honey, it's very, and I told him this, I said, you know, the, the, because I was, I thought you were coming over from massage and everything like that, and now it's not that situation anymore, because of the fact that you feel uncomfortable. So, basically, um, I told him, I said, you know what? 
I'm going to just tell you this. It's situations like this that makes girls that are stealth continue to be stealth. Because who wants to be treated like an outcast? Who wants to be treated like a disease? Who wants to be treated like the friend or wants to be in the friend zone? Hi, people. You know, I'm, I'm, I apologize if I'm not really corresponding that much right now. I'm, I'm more in vent mode because of the fact that I don't know how to feel right now. Because <sighs> um, the L's just keep coming. And um, I feel that, like, wow, like, I'm, I'm really in this, I'm really in a situation of shock right now because, like, this guy was very attractive. And, but then again, I've had situations in the past 24 hours where I did have a guy that was very attractive and we hung out and we had a great conversation last night and then when I get back home and everything, and mind you, I saw the picture and everything like that, and this is where things like took a look. Everything was on the up and up. We went out to dinner and everything and then I realized that <clears throat> there was a big disconnect because he was much smaller than I anticipated. And for the lack of better words, um, it was an okay sexual situation, but a great conversation. But um, I wasn't satisfied. And then I actually had another person that actually I used to hook up with. And I actually sent him a video because he asked me, oh, send me a video of like, how you got it in New York. And this is a setup, girls. When guys usually do this, I already know what's going on. But I didn't expect this from him, mind you, because, you know, he's really huge and everything like that. Um, and then I sent him the video with me and the guy, and then here comes the shaming. Oh, you do this with every guy? Oh, I'm scared now. What? Wait a minute, you just sent, you sent me two videos of you fucking girls raw, and now you're shaming me? And I went in to give him my thought shame, PSA, and like, I can tell that he, this is the type of black man that he is. He's a very flashy type of black man, because when he saw my PSA, he said, mm. Well, I got a big dick, so that doesn't apply to me. My credit score's pretty good, that doesn't apply to me. And I got my own place and my... Yeah, so that doesn't apply to me. So, hmm, wow. And then he starts sending me screenshots of his credit score. And, and, and all this stuff, like, this. all the stuff that typical black, <laughs> black ghetto people do that's not used to me. Because, you know, honestly, he had nothing to prove to me. But I guess he just wanted to just throw it in my face. And then here he comes with the... Okay. So I said, okay, well, does that... Does any of the superficial things that you're telling me and that you're supplying me with, does this help at all when you go to your wife or your girlfriend, which I doubt you have, and have to tell her that you sneak and you see trans women behind her back. Which she will <clears throat> see that as being a homosexual. And trust me, I did not do this as a way of shaming him. No, I did do this as a way of shaming him. And I'm going to explain why. Because when you're in a situation like this, you have to use whatever you can. Because you're out there alone and these men, they try it. And, honey, you got to bring them back down to, to here. Because in this society, male privilege is real. And in a world where it's 25, 25 women, women, not trans, women to every guy, a lot of these guys just really feel like they're untouchable. So you got to bring them back down to, you know, 
So then this is where he came and tried me. He said, yeah, I would, wouldn't have that problem, but, you know, my girl that I'm with right now, she's a, she's a post-op. So, yeah. So that's something that I don't have to deal with. Oh! <laughs> oh, well, honey, you have a whole totally different situation. And then that's when I lit in and I just let him have it. And I said, well, you know what, honey? I give you credit and, you know, God bless you. Because I'm not shaming trans women, I'm on post-ops, but for one thing, a lot of trans women, trans women completely can be delusional. Um, and we do suffer from gender dysphoria. Try basically getting a sex change and constantly having to tell people or show people that you are a woman because you have a sex change and then go into set neighborhoods or whatever and you still get read as your birth gender or you get men that come up to you that thinks you are pre-op and no longer wants to have anything to do with you because you don't have the penis are guys like this guy here that will not have anything to do with you just because you were honest and told him that you used to have a penis. So you're right there in the middle. You're fucked. So I said, hey, good luck with that, honey. Because he actually thought that was like, like a come up. And I, yeah, I let him know, honey. Yeah. So anyways, that was that situation. And then, and then I was conversing with another person. And people do this thing on social media. And particularly on um, PLF or Grindr or whatever like that. They like to keep, they like to give you false, a false representation, a false hope. And I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's some, it could be a normal reason. But I don't understand, like, when I tell a guy, when I say, hey, what's up? What are you doing? When are you available to link up? And then you say, oh, I'm available to link up now. And then sooner or later, as the conversation progresses, that right now leads to, or turns into, that you're at work. Or that suddenly, oh, I had this happen just the other day. Suddenly, in the middle of us chilling, you realize that, oh, I got to go and tend to my brother because my brother needs my help on some irrelevant shit that is actually more important than spending time with you. So how do you think that makes me feel? But you know, I'm telling you what I do because I know exactly what this is. And girls, you have to, you have to catch this when it is. What this is, is a scapegoat. When a guy gives you some out of outlandish excuse about something that he has to do an hour from now, that's his way of setting, in, setting up a scape plan because he knows the girls can be clingy. So he wants to basically have that scapegoat plan so when he gets his off, not yours, when he gets his off, he actually has that to fall back on. No, no, this is how I got him together. When he tells me that, guess what I do? That is where I say, oh, you, oh, oh, you think that you're going to basically get your climax off. And then, no, 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 guess what? You can leave right now. I'm not going to give you that liberty. And you know what? This has been one of the hardest weeks because of the fact that, you know, I had tried to do something that I that was very foreign to me, and that was being in a sober state of mind, and it was a struggle because I did not know how to function, I did not know which way was um, up or left, I did not advocate drug use, I did not advocate substance abuse, but here is one thing that fucking gang and fucking people sober will not tell you, and people will say this, oh, get sober, sober, oh, this one, but they don't tell you this, that there's a detoxifying stage that you go through. And that detoxifying stage can go one, two, three, in my case, four days, where you do nothing but sleep. 
and you don't know how to function because you don't know how to function when you don't have your crutch. So that's what I did. And I just got up and slept and, you know, just was pretty much like a vegetable. Um, oh, yeah, and another thing. I had no sex drive, so I really didn't know how to function. I'm just like, yeah. And then, um, yeah. Long story short, I went to a couple meetings and everything, and I said to myself, see, sometimes you have to, when you are in whatever you're going through, you have to make a decision that is best for you. Fuck what NA says. Fuck what AA says. Fuck what CNA says. Fuck what your sponsor says. Fuck what the people say. And, oh, you just get sober. You have to come to the decision and say, what is going to work best for me? Because if I get sober right now, and there's been studies that have shown, like, when you get people like off of really hardcore drugs like um, heroin it actually does them more harm than good um, but the fact of the matter is that you have to come to that pivotal road and you have to say to yourself I don't have time for this shit I don't know how to function and you know I don't know what I'm doing here because I didn't know what I was doing um what is my drug of choice um I, why don't you go back and watch some of the old Tea Time episodes? Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to go into what my drug of choice is because, like I said, you know, people use things like that against me. It's not too hard to figure out. But the fact of the matter is, is that, um, once again, I want to be very crystal clear. You have to make, this was something that I had to come to grips with. And something that two of my girlfriends that are not addicts could not tell me. And I had to come to grips with the fact that if I continue to try to be sober, I'm not going to get this, 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 and this done. However, if I can take me a drink and, you know, get back to where what I'm used to, everything will fall into place. So guess what I did? I got right back to where what I was used to. And yes, it fell back into place. I knew how to think clearly because yes, that was my crush. Yes, that is what I am. I am an addict. Guess what? But you, but you know what? What's so liberating is that when you go through situations like this, like what I'm going through right now and what I go through all the time, I don't know how people do function in a world without some type of coping mechanism when you're going through the fact that you don't belong and it's like people tell you things like oh I'm, I like female you know, I, I ain't gay or anything well gee I really wish it was that simple because you know guess what I mean gay guys don't like me either so I'm like right in the middle so, like I've said in many times before, sometimes my coping mechanisms has stopped me and has helped me from getting in my car that is not working right now, from driving dead set in the Los Angeles River, which is a man-made river by the way, and committing suicide. But I know and I feel that I'm here for a better and bigger purpose because every time that I do tend to try to commit suicide or so, um, I'm, I'm worse at trying to commit suicide than I am at trying to be sober and recovery. I'm just really bad at it. And I just kind of just gave up on it. I just, okay, this is not working. I, I give up. Um, it's not that I'm believing that sober is better. I do believe that I do believe that there are certain aspects of sober that are great. I do believe that ultimately having a sober life is great. But getting there is the problem. I can... I, no. No. That's not going to happen right now. And you know why it's not going to happen? Because of the fact that I'm trans. And even if, let's say, I had a job at one of these agencies that a lot of these girls have 
you know, these girls in NYC and, and LA that where they look down on the girls and, you know, think, saying things like, oh, I have a real job. I have a, like, I have a real job. I don't have to do sex work. And only to find out that the guy that you're dating is actually paying the other girls and seeing you for free. Um, not shame, but I've been there before. So, when you have these real jobs, the fact that you're trans still puts you at stake for said substances. Because certain men, like white guys out here in LA, I love white guys, but you know what? White men out here, I'm scared of them. Because if white guys come on to me and they know I'm trans, here's how they get you. Now, they bake and switch. The white guy will hit you up and then they'll send you all these dick pictures, all these big, very hot white guy. And then you ask the magic question. Hey, are you verse, bottom, top, you party? So he knows what he needs to say. He's going to say that he's top. Most of the time he'll say top, verse. And he'll say, I party, but I don't do the hardcore. And as time goes on, that verse turns into bottom, and that I party, but I turns into hardcore. Because guess what? In his mind, he needs to be fucking fucked up to deal with the fact that he's dealing with someone in his mind that he feels that is a fucking dude with a wig and he has to go back to his wife and deal with that. People can't deal with that sober. So, he has to be fucked up. So, guess what? When he knows that you're trans, nine times out of ten, and he's a white guy, he's going to be fucked up. He may tell you something different, but he's going to be fucked up. And sooner or later, because most white guys are privileged and, for the most part, and out here. So, they don't have the same hang-ups that black men have with wanting to always be alpha male, alpha male, dominant, dominant, dominant. So, therefore, sooner or later, he's going to be the bottom. And sooner or later, that big dick that you saw in those pictures are pro is probably about this small. Because he's probably done um, a whole... Um, eight ball of crystal meth that basically makes him actually useless. And now you find yourself saying to yourself, how did I get here? I wanted to date this guy and he pulled me into this realm of wanting to be his sissy bitch. So then, guess what? You have to go for the demeaning alpha male, low life, as most people would consider, um, black men, only to be shamed by girls by saying, oh, you keep dating the same guy, don't you do you dating him? Oh, but you know what? The guy that I really wanted to date, he was hot. He's an, a boxer. But guess what? I told him I was trans, and you know, that put me in the friend zone. And you guys know what happens in the friend zone. <laughs> that means no sex, that means you're the homie, that means you over there, I'm over here. Oh, that means that he can show you his sex videos with other females that he fucks raw and basically has no in, that has no in, inhibitions with because of the fact that that's a female to him. Now, as I said before, and I still stand by this, I am, I definitely feel that I am more two-spirited, but sometimes I do regret saying to myself, like, why did I really make that decision on, like, going the, the whole nine yards of being trans? And then I realized that even going back as early as 11 and 14 when I have tried to be a guy, 
and girls laughing at me and telling me that <laughs> you're gonna be a guy, you're gonna be a tag, or, you know, even having, I think the last girl that I dated in high school, I actually had her stolen from me from a stud, because the stud told me, you don't know what you're doing with this, you don't want this, I, I know how to handle this. Um, so, you know, like I said, you know, I'm having somewhat of a pity party because I honestly don't know what to, where to go from here because I'm in a crossroads. Do I get sober? Or do I get clean? Do I tell the tea or do I, do I tell a guy my tea and put myself in danger and become trans woman number 27 that becomes on the list? that also does not get recognized by Black Lives Matter because you all know when you become trans you forfeit you forfeit your you forfeit your gender oh no you forfeit your race because some black guy recently told me that I am the reason and I am the the downfall to the black community he told me I was a slap to the black community because I was put here by the white man to weaken the black male aesthetic. Um, and that was interesting. So now I'm not black, now I'm not trans, not whatever. So it's like I'm right in the middle. And I honestly don't know where to go. Oh yeah, and then getting banned by Grinder. <laughs> the one place that you can be in all your thoughtness. And I think I saw this coming. Because I told God, I think I changed my profile around. And I was telling, because I, I kept getting hit up by people that did not fit my criteria. And they knew they did not fit my criteria. And I said, you know what? Let me change things up. And I said, you know what? I'm looking for such and such. I'm looking for big dick freaks. And if you don't fit that criteria, athlete, and I'm looking for athletes. If you don't fit that criteria, please, 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 get ready to pay to play or get the, raise the hell up out of my inbox because you know and I know that you are not what I'm looking for and you know and I know that even if I, even if you, if, even if you were what I was looking for, I would still have to deal with the fact that you're not taking me home, you're not, you're, you want to give me pennies on the dollar. You want to basically give me the very least amount of time and money or whatever um, for your sexual fetishes and then go back to your wife and put me right back on the shelf. It's called oppression. And that's where the men, that's what the men do with us. They oppress us. So now, right now, I am definitely, you know, I commend the girls that are able to pull off being stealth. I know I cannot pull off being stealth because I'm too well known and I'm too much of a public figure. And also, I, I can't live my life living over my shoulder. But then again, I honestly feel like I don't, I definitely don't want to get with a trans attracted man at this point in my life because of the fact that here's the thing, the problem with the trans attracted man and this is what the girls will not tell you okay trans attracted man when a guy says he's trans attracted his attraction goes from here to here with some girls because just like some girls like the bad boy, some girls like the epitome of a man. And when we think of the epitome of a man, we don't think of a guy saying, hey, I'm trans attracted, I'm open to dating trans women. Um, and that's just the truth of the matter. I mean, the alpha male. And then I have to do situations like what I did last night and basically tell a guy that I have a 
female girlfriend over and she doesn't speak that much English. Oh yeah, this is this is really working. And um she wants to know can you like recommend another black guy for her and whatever like that child I can even get the text out fast enough before he said he would be over. Now, like I said if you if I would have been honest and said, Hey, me and you have a really good connection, but let's be honest, you've told me before and you've let me know in so many ways how it takes you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days to res respond to my text is that you'll get to me when you get to me because I'm trans and that's not really your thing and I'm on the back burner and I'm also, th that's another thing, a lot of us trans women are we're on the back burner and um, we have to take a number. And, um, that's another damning thing. So anyways, like that, um, I, I guarantee you, if I would not be conniving or whatever, this guy would have came through. Absolutely. Of course he came through. We had some great sex. I had to deal with the fact that he had to keep asking about the girl that was not going to be here. But, hey, got to deal with that to, you know... But then again, then after he leaves, you have to deal with the fact that you know he didn't come over because of the fact that you, you know. And some of my girlfriends say, oh, I don't know if I can deal with the fact that the guy is coming over because he's coming over off of the, the strength of another girl. Well, girl, in this thing, you don't have that many options, honey. And unless you plan on going to prison anytime soon, we're actually the odds are in your favor and you, there's 25 guys to every girl you gotta deal with what you gotta deal with and then you have girls like one of my good girlfriends who has this belief system that only if she gets a sex change everything's gonna be okay and I'm wise enough to know that because I feel like women, a lot of women are are more oblivious than some of the men. Sometimes I, I I like the fact that I can see everything going, everything happening. Because black women are the most oblivious. But they're black women are strong. But they but they see what they want to see, and I've said this before. I, Black, black woman calls me and says, um, I just want to let you know that I know what's up with you, but at the end of the day, I got a pussy. I got his kids, and he's coming back home to me. Okay, that may be very well. That's why I told her. That may be very well true, but your pussy, my dick, cannot interfere with that expendable uh huh with that white man's bank account and then that's what the reality is huh I'm about to go to Denny's but um I want Denny's I'm about to come back to, um, uh huh I want you to tell me if this stuff is coke and stuff huh I want you to tell me if this stuff is coke okay so what are you getting all kind of drugs before you get out of the plane you talking about the, the piece of trade yes that, See, even that. my gay next door neighbor has better, a much liberated sex life than me. <laughs> oh, I God. Was, I, was, I, was, I was over here. And he's showing me the pictures. Something else that I, wow. But I can't have that because guess what? I'm right in the middle. So, okay. So, anyways, I will go ahead, um... mind you. Selfish. Selfish neighbor. And you have to learn this in LA that what you when you do a favor for someone, you won't some when you do a favor for someone, it used to be I pat your back, you pat my back. Let's just say this. This 
This is how he operates, honey. Oh, Kiva. I was just at the Taco Bell. I was thinking of you. Oh, great. I am really hungry. Can you... I would love some Taco Bell. Oh, I just pulled off. <laughs> Hollywood. But anyways, I just wanted to just vent this really quickly and um, just let you guys know what I'm going through right now. Um, because <sighs> now I really question myself. That was really a waste of time. Because I was bitch. I was bitch. You know how you get prepared and you're just thinking, bitch. Because, like, he wasn't no, like, night. Like, Honestly, he was not no everyday type of, like, piece of trade, bitch. This was, like, um, like, brown skin, athletic, like, oh my, oh my god. Like, something, the perfect Adonis, to the point, like I said, I had to question if he was actually heterosexual. But then he started opening his mouth and he started talking and yeah, and I realized that he was. <sighs> but this goes back to the Tricks Bunny Syndrome. Silly faggot. Dicks are for chicks and you're not one of them. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later. And um, whatever. <laughs> oh god. Alright. I don't even know what I want to do now. Alright, talk to you later. Bye.